tonight I have a message that's been, God's been just showing me and dealing with my heart uh, that I've called the kingdom of this world versus the kingdom of God. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus you would help us to understand and that you would help us hear, God, from your spirit, your truth, Lord, that would help us change how we think, how we view things, and help us with our faith to not be discouraged in times of trouble. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Paul, before Agrippa being brought up on charges, is addressing Agrippa in Acts chapter 26 and verse 18. And he is given permission to speak and give account, and he goes back to his road to Damascus experience, and he's telling what happened, and he gets down to verse 18, and Paul says this. He says that he was called to preach so that he could open the eyes, he's speaking of the Gentiles of the, 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 particularly, so that they may turn from darkness to light and from, uh, the one version says, from the dominion of Satan to God, uh, the other versions say power, this is the same thing, to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. So God has, Jesus uh, was, had, had given this commission, Jesus is speaking, the, and, and Paul is telling them what Jesus said on that road, and Jesus is saying to go and preach, go and be a vessel, you're going to use him so that he can preach this truth to open their eyes so that they can turn from darkness to light. You see, the kingdom of the world is darkness. The kingdom of God is light. The kingdom of this world is ruled and has dominion with Satan, and the kingdom of God is ruled by the king, Jesus Christ, God Almighty, he rules. The kingdom of this world is what is around us on earth. The kingdom of God is what abides inside us. In 1 John five nineteen, uh, John says, we know that we are of God, and that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. What is the world? This world, this temporary world we live in because Adam lost dominion over this world. He was given dominion. The first Adam that was given Eve, he was deceived and lost his right as a man, as human beings to rule this earthly kingdom. He gave it up and that he fell into sin. And Satan won that power to have dominion and be the prince of the air and has as under, the world is under the power of the evil one. So we talk about the world, we talk about living for what this world has to give us. Well, what does it have to give us in our humanity and our flesh? And, and, and John tells us the lust of the eyes, the things, the possessions, the things we want, the pride of life, position and power, and uh, the, uh, the lust of the flesh things that make us feel good, that we want, whether it be over too much food or taking things that God has given us and taking it outside the boundaries of the Holy Spirit control. John eight forty four, he's talking and trying to tell the, the Jewish leaders, and some of them were believers and others weren't, and he's trying to teach them, and, and, and they're not getting it all. And he says, well, you don't get it because you're not in the light. He's telling them, you don't get it because you're of, you're of the world and you're under de the power of the deceitful one who will blind you and you're in darkness. And then he says to them, Jesus in 844 of John 844, the gospel of John, you are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie... He speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies, the father of liars. And uh, so that's his native language. He's a liar, the father of lies. And, uh, and so in this world here that we live in, we have Satan who continues to lie. He lied to Adam and Eve, didn't he? He, he asked questions in a deceitful way to get them doubt. Did God really say? And then he told them, well, 
God knows that if you do this, you'll be like little gods. And guess what? His number one attack on you is to lie to you about yourself and others. He wants to use divisiveness. He wants to, to, make, to, to render you with none, no effect and no authority, no power, that you don't realize that the kingdom of God resides in you. He wants to undermine everything. Listen, where do you think all jealousies come from and insecurity? It's the enemy. He's always whispering, well, who are you? Well, so-and-so thinks this. We worry about what each other, we, we worry about what, we, what people think because the enemy wants to make everything about us instead of everything about God. And the way that he attacks all people is lies to them. For instance, the Bible is clear that all good things come from God. That God wants to bless us. But just think about it a minute. The first time something bad happens, God doesn't love you. God doesn't care. God isn't real. Where was God? To try to turn people bitter. That's what he does. He lies. So here's what I'm saying. This liar is the prince and the power of this world. And so just understand the people you love and care about that need the truth and need to come into the kingdom of God is hearing a voice of the power of this world, this temporary world we live in. He is the one putting thoughts and, and, and perspectives in our hearts and minds so that we, when we face life circumstances and all that life is, we listen to a voice that is lying too many times instead of the voice of truth. The voice that lies says, you're unforgiven and you've done too much. I mean, how many times, you know, you, you cross the, 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 the boundary, there is no more forgiveness. You've, there, you're, 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 you're not worth anything. God doesn't love you, makes you question. But here's the thing, it's not, it's the word of God is absolutely clear and true and what it says is truth, not what comes to your mind from the evil one putting doubts there. He will continuously put doubts. What, what is faith? The substance of things to hope for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Faith is believing the word of God, it comes by hearing. And by, by the word of God, by hearing the word of God, by reading the word of God, faith rises up and believes what God has to say. But the enemy always undermines what God has to say because Satan is an absolute liar and he's the father. The devil is a liar and he's the father of all liars. But on John 14, 17, it says, talking about God, this Holy Spirit, that he's the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him because you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. We get it, but they don't get it because until you have the Holy Spirit come in and reveal things to you, you can't understand why something's wrong. You know, these people that want to argue and reason out certain sins are not wrong. You know how people are making what is obviously wrong to us and we go, how can they say that's okay? How do they not get that? Because there's a, a, an enemy that's the prince and power of the air that's blinding them where they're using what they think is common sense and kindness and just simple good human reactions and responses to each other and they reason in their own mind and they come up with that which isn't true. That's why I said this morning, I said I don't care what you say, what you think. If it's a contrary to this book, you're wrong. This book is the final authority. So you can say what you want to do and devise, devise your own moral code, but your moral code needs to go with the book. And the Holy Spirit is the one that quickens the word and makes it alive. It's the sword of the Spirit, the word of God. And so, but the world can't receive him. Those that are caught in the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes that are of this kingdom of this world, with Satan as their father, they cannot understand until the Holy Spirit changes and enlightens them. That's that convincing or convicting of the spirit of sin, of righteousness, and that there will be a judgment. John 15, Jesus said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, how many of you of the world? I don't think so. If, but if you were of the world, the world would love its own. That's a lot of people 
that the enemy is lying to them. They're wanting to be accepted by peers. They're fearful to stand up. They're fearful to be light. They're fearful to be different. They're fearful to voice truth in the face of lies, right? The sad thing is because they want to be accepted by the world, by people that see things differently. They don't want to be persecuted. But because you are not of the world, it says, if you were of the world, the world would love its own, but because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you, because I called you out. You know, I, I, I will tell you that many times I've been persecuted for my beliefs and my faith, my standards, my morals of what I believe. I, I, uh, I have not always lived up to everything I believe. How about you? I mean, how we always perfectly but it doesn't change what's right. You know, because a person that believes what's right doesn't always live what's right, doesn't change what's right. Is that true? So the light is still the light, the truth is still the truth, and it doesn't depend on someone else being perfect. It's God that's perfect and his word is true. Second Corinthians 4.4 4 says, in whose case the God of this world has blinded, there it is, the minds of the unbelieving, so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. That's the job of Satan. He blinds the world. Many people, you got to be, you got, you, you know, how do you, how do you, like, be mean to or ridicule or hate someone who's blind that can't help the difficulty that comes with blindness? That's why Jesus was compassionate and loving in the truth of sharing with people that are just in the world that were just blind as could be. When you're blind, you're blind. What are you going to do unless Jesus opens your eyes? When Paul was arrested on the road to Damascus, his eyes were open and he saw and he was revealed to Christ Jesus and suddenly the truth was there. But Satan blinds people. That's why prayer is important that goes with witness Holy Spirit to go before you. Ephesians 2, 2 says this, in which, talking about the believers he, and where they were, you know, because this is true for some of us and all of us really, but especially some of us who lived into adulthood before we really came to Christ. He's talking about their sins and lists a whole bunch of sins and there's a number of them and then it says, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to, look what it, and this is the point here, the prince of the power of the air. That is Satan, guys. The prince of the power of the air. The prince of the kingdom of this world is Satan. And it says, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. You see, there is an evil spirit that works inside sons of disobedience and those that are blind and those that are the kingdom are part of the kingdom of this world. And that's where we live, guys. We're not living on the outside in the kingdom of God. We live on the inside with the kingdom of God. Colossians 1.13 says, For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transformed us into the kingdom of his blood, his son. We've been rescued. You know, all of us, if we haven't been rescued, then we haven't truly been saved. He rescues us from the domain or the, 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 uh, the power of that darkness, the domain, and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. 1 John 2, 15 and 16 is a verse I keep referring to where John says, don't love the world nor the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father but is of the world. And then John writes to the children of God in 1 John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 and 5, you are from God, little children, have overcome them, because greater is he in you than he that is in the world. Satan is in the world, but God is in you. The kingdom of Satan is this world, but God is in us, and the kingdom of God is within you and within me. And so uh, it goes on, it says, they are from the world, therefore they speak as from the world, and the world listens to them. We're of God, folks. Matthew 4, 8, and 9 says this. Again, the devil, this is speaking of Jesus' temptation, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you. What? Satan's saying, I'm going to give it to you, Jesus? I'm going to give you all these 
things you see here, this kingdom, I'm going to give it to you? Yeah, he says, he showed him the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I'll give you if you fall down and worship me. Luke uh, mentioned this this way, Luke 4, 6. And the devil said to him, I will give you all this domain and its glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. That's Satan's temptation to Jesus. Let me tell you something. Jesus overcame that as a man, not as God. He went there fasting, and he spoke the word of God, quickened by the Spirit of God. He was led in the wilderness, full of the Holy Spirit, came out of the wilderness full of the Holy Spirit, and he spoke, and he quoted Scripture to Satan right then to overcome. I want you to know something. Jesus, God took a great risk there because Jesus went right before Satan, and what Satan offered Jesus was real. He literally had dominion and rules the kingdoms of this world. You understand that? He's got that. He was offering it to Jesus, and Jesus said no, because he knew better. And guess what? Satan offers all people a piece of this world. He entices by making it appealing, by saying, here, just live for this. This is real life. This is fulfillment. This is what you need to complete your inner man. I'll give you this. And he always whispers, and it's always lies. He offers satisfaction, but like Linda used to sing, only Jesus can satisfy my soul. Only he can cleanse and make us whole. It's Jesus. But Satan, he he came against Jesus, and he does the same thing. He's got the same old tricks. He's a deceiver, and he's a liar. So... Jesus overcomes the devil, and he's greater. John 12, 31 says, Now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. The kingdom of God is greater than the kingdom of this world. The ruler will be cast out of this world. That's Satan. And Acts 10, 38 says, You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. You see, there is in this world the enemy, and it was when Jesus was on earth too, and he was oppressing people. And we have to have the kingdom of God in us and understand the authority that comes from the kingdom of God so that we can go forth and cast out demons, so that we can be light in the middle of the darkness. And so we know that there is authority uh, of the Holy Spirit and anointing of the Holy Spirit and have the same power so that we can do that too, healing all the oppressed that were by the devil. See, the devil is real, and he oppresses, and he comes against people. You understand that? And people that have all kinds of things going on, you talk to them at work, they may even say they're a Christian. Guess what? They have Christian beliefs, but there's a difference in Christian belief and the power of the Spirit that comes into a heart, change a heart, revolutionizes the heart, and has a kingdom of God that lives within the man of God, the woman of God. Do you understand that? And so many times deceive people that think they're of the kingdom of God are really in the hands of the enemy and they're caught in the devil's number one trick is religion. Religion. Hebrews 2, 14. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, Jesus himself likewise also partook of the same through that, that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil. You see how powerful the devil is in the kingdom of this world? He has the power of death. And when you're in the power and the darkness of this world, then you see, here's the thing. You're under the curse of death. Sin and death because Satan hates people because God loves people. And everything that God loves, Satan hates. He's the one trying to send souls to hell. He knows his doom. He's deceived. He might have a little bit of a plan. He thinks maybe he can throw a curveball, come back with behind 100 to nothing, and somehow in the ninth inning, full count, hit something to, to come back. But no way. He's not going to do it. You see, Jesus rendered him powerless and took away the power of death because Jesus is life. See, the Bible says, Jesus says that the thief has come to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. This is speaking of the kingdom of God within you. It says, no temptation has overtaken you, but such is common to man. And God 
the God, the kingdom of God that lives in you, Christ in you, God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you may be able to endure it. I'm going to tell you something. God wants us to be overcomers, not weaklings. He doesn't want us just to hold on and get into heaven like crawling under a little hole somehow up there. He wants you to be overcomers. Read, as, as, as uh, Dan Betzer was talking about today in the teaching here before church, just read what the Bible says to the churches in Revelation, how to be overcomers and overcomers. And it's by the Spirit, it's by the Word, it's Christ in you, the kingdom of God in you, and listening and being led uh, by, by the, the, the king himself who will direct you to not be, not be defected, affected by the world and the lies of the devil, the lies that says God won't heal them, the lies that says God doesn't do miracles anymore, the lies that says God doesn't answer your prayers, the lies that says, well, who are you to ask? You're imperfect. He lies, 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 lies. Everything God says, he says the opposite. That's the, the way Satan is. He's a liar. That's all he's got is a lie. But God can help us overcome. Oh, yeah, we've all been tempted the same, and we've failed, haven't we? But we need to realize and be challenged to a deeper, to something more, to something stronger, to a power of the Word and the Spirit that we need to enter into a person that's devoted their full life and their heartbeat is in the morning, in the noon, in the night, that we want to walk in the light of the gospel and spread the kingdom of God. What did Jesus say in the Sermon on the Mount? To seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and don't worry about the things of the world. These other things will be added, food and clothing and shelter, the basics. We're not just concerned about the basics in America anymore in the Christian church. We're concerned about much more than all of that. God, please help us to get a hold of the value of the kingdom of God that he puts in our hearts. I was wondering, and I haven't decided yet because I haven't got to this consult since I've been thinking about this with two of our great theologians, Dr. Hawkins and Dr. Walter back there, but I always try to figure out, I try to figure out why is sometimes it say kingdom of heaven and sometimes kingdom of God? And they seem to be somewhat interchangeable. And I've heard things, but a new thought came to me that the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of God in heaven. And the kingdom of God is the kingdom of God in the midst of the world in our hearts. The kingdom of God is in us, his followers. And it's just a thought to me. And the thought to me is when we look at the word, when you see that kingdom of God, realize he's talking about something that's in you, not up the throne of God with Jesus at the right hand of God the Father, but what is within you. To seek first the kingdom of God is King Jesus, the kingdom of God within you. And the Lord's prayer says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's a good prayer because if the kingdom of God comes in you, the will of God's gonna flow out of you and on to others. And you can believe that God's will is according to this book and it's a good will. It's a loving will. It's a will to bless. It's a will to heal. It's a will to deliver, a will to save. You see? And so if we will pay more attention to the kingdom of God that lives in us and the book of the king, then we're going to believe differently and our perspective about trouble on earth is going to be different. You see, someone has an accident and they die. In the kingdom of the world, we're going to listen to the liar and is going to question everything about God. But in the kingdom of God, we go, hey, Jesus is king here, but Satan is ruler in the world. And we're going to be able to easily see that accident or that whatever else happened is a work of Satan and sin, not God. Because we know the king, God himself, desires to bless and guess what? The king has the right to step in the domain of the enemy and sometimes does and intervenes in the affairs of human beings. But only when we listen and when we call upon him and we believe it, we release the power of God, his angels, his spirit, his kingdom to, inter to, to uh, 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 intervene or to, uh, to interrupt the natural things that would happen and the evil things that would happen. You see, man 
can't help but do evil things when they're of the world because Satan's their little prince. So we live in a world where there's danger, there's trouble, there's all this stuff going on. But if somehow we can get a hold of the kingdom of God and the truth that Jesus says, then when all this trouble comes, we never go, why God? Why did you do this? We just go, I don't know, I don't understand, but I know God is God. Uh, he's got my back, he's walked beside me, he's gone before me, and he is on the throne. And I'm gonna believe the truth, and that is God has not forsaken, and God is not a mean God, and God is not gonna smite somebody and, and be awful. God is with us. And I'm telling you, there's something deeper about the kingdom of God within us that we need to grab a hold of. Romans 16, 20 says, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. When did he, when did he do that? Yeah, I'm telling you, he's there right now. I mean, I, I, I don't love that song, but I remember where, he's under my feet, he's under my, well, he's not literally under my feet. He's under your feet because the Christ Jesus Christ has done it because he's in you, he's saved you, he's delivered you from the domain of the ruler of this darkness of Satan and his lies. You're no longer under that authority, you're free. Whom the Son says free shall be free indeed. And the Revelation 20.10 tells of the demise of the enemy. The devil who deceived them was thrown in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are also, and they'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. Jesus said in John 18.36, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, my servants would be fighting right now that I might be delivered over to the Jews, but my, so that I would not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Romans 14.17 says the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's spiritual, guys. Luke 17, 20, 21 says, by being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered to them. Listen to this. The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is. Are there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. Jesus says, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. And one version, the, other, one, the, 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 the main version says is within you, the King James. It's inside you. The kingdom of God abides in you. He is right here. The King James and the NIV says that the, the kingdom of God is within you. Did you realize that? Do you realize what power is within you? It's the kingdom of God. We're walking around the kingdom of this world, and we got the kingdom of God. That's big. Acts 28, 31, boldly and without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul preached boldly. Acts 19, 8 says, he entered the synagogue, and for three months, Paul spoke boldly, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. That's what we have to preach, the kingdom of God. You see, when Christ saves you and his spirit comes into you, the kingdom of God now is king over your life. And if that's why it's so important if we don't repent and resent, surrender, then we have religious belief. We have a, 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 a formula of salvation, but we have, we're powerless. See, the power of God is the kingdom of God. It says in the last days, people will have a former religion, but nine, the power of. What's the power? The king. King Jesus, the kingdom of God in us. And Matthew 6, 19 promises authority of the king to accomplish his will. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth, it'll be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, it'll be loosed in heaven. You see, there's authority in being a part of the kingdom of God. When you find his will and pray in his will, God's already determined what's going to happen. You agree with it. The word goes forth and does it. You don't do it. God does it. The kingdom of God does it. It's within you. 1 Corinthians 15, 50, I tell you this, brothers. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. You see, the body is a part of this earth. It's going to perish. It's perishable. It's perishable. But the kingdom of God is forever. It abides, and, the, and, and our flesh is not going to get it. It's our spirit. He saves us. And that's why, thank God, we're going to get rid of this old sinful, desiring flesh that, is, that has been corrupted. And uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11, I'm almost done, says, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, 
idolaters, adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality or women, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor, nor women who practice sexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. You see, the kingdom of God cannot come into your life and abide in you unless you turn from your sin. Repentance is the first step. And then the kingdom of God will come. And it's really turning from self and sin and the love of this world. The ruler of this world has so many people who know about God and believe the theology of God and are deceived thinking they're going to heaven. He got them by the hooks just like this because they live for this world, they breathe this world, they hunger for the things their eyes see, they desire the pleasures of this world more than God, they're after it, and it is a worldly kingdom. The prince, Satan, is, you see the problem in our culture today, in around the world, and in, even in America, because I know it best, is not politics. It's preachers and pastors and pulpits that's what it is, afraid to say the truth, that are living for the kingdom of this world, wanting approval of men more than approval of God, the money and the attendance to make a church and be successful, and so they want pride and success more than truth and more than God. The kingdom of God is what we need, folks. Last story. There was a man, John 33, John 3, 1 to 36. Uh, so this is only a part of it. It's not all of it. I'm sorry. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher. You come from God. No one can do these signs that you do unless God is with, with you, him. Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, I want to say again, I don't know, but I, I, here's what I suspect. The kingdom of God is all, all obviously in heaven, so we can call it the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of God is obviously reigning in heaven. But the kingdom of God in the midst of the kingdom of this world in the darkness and the light is right here. And how does the kingdom of God get in you unless you're born again by the Spirit? That's what we need. We need to be serious about understanding what the kingdom of God looks like. And it changes your faith base. It changes your perspective on tragedy, on trouble, on end times, on everything. I'll just tell you, I don't know when because I've been waiting and no one's going to pressure me to preach something until I'm ready and I think it's right. Because the right time is God's time. But I do think the times are winding up quick that Jesus is coming back. But I'm going to tell you something. It won't make a difference when people are caught in the kingdom of this world because people don't want to hear it. So until you preach other stuff to shake loose the grip of the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes, you're never going to get them to turn and run to the kingdom of God and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's another word that's misunderstood. Let's stand together. We open these altars tonight to pray, to seek the Lord, to worship, to cry out to God. Uh, I urge you, as I've been doing to evaluate how many days do you have? I know I'm a little bit weird. I take these pills for, for a gastric reflux and I buy three months at a time, you know? So that's like 90 pills maybe or something like that. So I take one every day. And I thought today, four three-month prescriptions a year I'm 63, if I'm 83, I've got 80 bottles to live. 80 gastric reflux bottles if I can live 20 more years. Don't laugh at that. Why was I thinking that? 
because I only have a, a certain number of hours and days to do something that's everlasting, that lasts forever. And uh, this, this thought came to me just in relationships of friends about the kingdom of God within us. And I've thought it in the past, but I molded it and molded it and molded it. And when I prayed, I molded it and I molded it and I molded it. And here's what I'm afraid of. We're more a part of, in a good way, the kingdom of this world and less a part of, in a powerful way, the kingdom of God. I need us to rise up and be mighty in spirit, in faith, pulling down strongholds in prayers, seeing God move in miraculous, powerful ways. Amen?